Hello everyone, in this session I will be discussing about Parkinsonism. Now Parkinson's disease, it is a progressive neurodegenerative disorder that results in deterioration of neurons in basal ganglia. Basically there is decrease in dopamine synthesis. Dopamine is less here. And why? Because there is damage to substantia nigra in your basal ganglia. Okay, substantia nigra is damaged in your basal ganglia because of that there is less dopamine in your body. Now epidemiology, the incidence is 0.2 per 1000 population and the prevalence rate is 1.5 per 1000 population and the incidence and prevalence they both increase with the age. As the age progress this disease uh, occurrence is more. Okay, so uh, about the sex predilection it is equal in men and women. Okay, so male and equal females they are equally affected they are equally prone to this disease now it is uh, to be very surprised it is less common among the smokers okay so that is unique now next is the age of onset the average age of onset is 60 years so we can say it's a disease of old age okay but in in 5 to 10 percent of peoples uh, there is one special condition so which is known as young onset parkinson's disease okay in 5 to 10 uh, percent of the peoples uh, less than 40 years age group is also affected okay and we call that uh, we call this condition as young onset parkinson's disease now rarely you will find this disease at age less than 30. now next is the etiology of parkinson's disease now uh, mostly this parkinson's disease is idiopathic we don't know the cause okay and when we know the causes when we know that there are multiple etiologies uh, are present then that particular condition we call a syndrome okay Parkinson's syndrome and uh, the genetic link uh, is not known to be associated with the uh, old age Parkinson's disease that is common in your young onset Parkinson's disease and there is one uh, typical pesticides that is your methyl phenyl tetra hydropyridine MPTP now it is uh, known to cause a severe Parkinson's disease and uh, other conditions as well for secondary Parkinson's disease there are lots of conditions uh, like there is association of an infection in influenza in past okay there was one pandemic uh, because of influenza there was anaphylitis in patients and that uh, is also linked to the Parkinson's disease repeated traumas okay that are also the important cause certain drugs uh, which are uh, decreasing your dopamine in your body like your antipsychotic drugs certain poisonings like your carbon monoxide poisoning you have wilson's disease as well so all these multiple etiologies uh, have been present then we call them as syndrome parkinson's syndrome now what all are the risk factors now the positive family history is a risk factor but it is not that common okay not that common and when uh, it is present uh, we say uh, it is it can be autosomal dominant as well as autosomal recessive then uh, the male gender is slightly more prone and had injury and exposure to well water plus rural living so both these are linked together rural living and well water okay now next is factors which decrease incidence uh, caffeine tobacco the anacids and estrogen replacement therapy in females all these factors they are known to reduce the risk factor in parkinson's disease now what are secondary parkinsonism or what all are the secondary conditions that can lead to or that are associated with parkinson's disease are here uh, in in certain sports uh, there is repeated trauma like in boxing okay in boxing you have uh, such disease presentation then infections like uh, pandemic encephalitis influenza infection then you have certain drugs like neuroleptics antipsychotics alpha methyl dopa lithium carbonate floxetine they all decrease dopamine levels okay so that these drugs are also associated with your parkinson's disease then the toxins like carbon monoxide mptp pesticides they are also known to uh, cause your parkinson's disease now there is uh, a uh, unilateral presentation as well in certain patients and those unilaterals they are mostly uh, associated with any 
neoplasm or any uh, trauma on that particular site or any vascular involvement and this vascular involvement also present uh, in lower body and we call it lower body parkinsonism as well okay then you have parkinsonism plus syndrome means syndromic association okay so these are your schreiderager syndrome steel richardson syndrome and parkinsons plus dementia then pathogenesis uh, now pathogenesis is such that you have one uh, area in basal ganglia that is known as substantia nigra okay and that substantia nigra is a, is a pigmented area it's very dark nigra itself means black okay and you can appreciate in cut section of your brain that this here this on right corner is your pigmented area and that pigmented area is known as substantia nigra and when there is a depigmentation of this area there is a decrease in your dopamine production okay and then we call it uh, parkinson's disease okay so there is depigmentation of substantia nigra plus there is a trophy of this area as well okay so the reduced dopaminergic output from the substantia nigra to globus palladium leads to the reduced inhibitory effect on subthalamic nucleus and the neurons of which become more active in inhibitory activation of cortex results in bradykinesia means slowness of the body movements okay so uh, this uh, disease uh, is sporadic as well as hereditary and the sporadic form is more common sporadic is more 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 common than your hereditary condition and among if it is hereditary it has autosomal dominant presentation and autosomal recessive presentation now in dominant you have certain genes association like alpha synuclein alpha synuclein gene then you have a leucine a rich repeat kinase 2 gene leucine a rich repeat kinase okay so you can say lrk2 gene then you have glucocerebrosidase gene mutation glucocerebrosidase okay so these uh, three genes mutation you see in autosomal dominant mode of inheritance then in autosomal recessive you have dj1 gene dj1 gene pink gene and parkin gene okay now uh, the important is that there is mutation in your dominant condition and there is mitochondrial dysfunction mitochondrial dysfunction in your recessive inheritance disease and because of these uh, mutations and mitochondrial dysfunction uh, what happens is there is misfolding of protein misfolding of proteins and the most important is your alpha synuclein and because of that uh, there is uh, damage to the substantia nigra that is how this disease runs okay now next uh, the clinical presentation of this uh, uh, is parkinson's disease now for clinical presentation you can uh, remember it with the mnemonic trap t stands for your trimus and then you have rigidity then a means a kinesia or bradykinesia then postural instability okay so these four are the typical presentation of patient now let's discuss all of them now when i talk about trimmers now the trimmers they are like pin rolling resting trimmers okay pin rolling trimmers so commonly uh, in hands and arms you see pin rolling motion in the fingers occurs most often at rest so these are resting trimmers okay that is important and they may involve diaphragm tongue lip jaw okay and these trimmers they increase with the stress of the patient then uh, comes the rigidity when i talk about rigidity uh, then you have uh, increased resistance to the passive movements means uh, there is a uh, involuntary increase in muscle tone that resists the passive motions and that results in cog wheel 
jerky and slow movements cog wheel like rigidity and then the movements are slow and jerky as well okay and in lower limbs a typical lead pipe uh, appearance you will notice okay so next is echinacea now echinacea means slow movement mostly okay it's bradykinesia or you can say hypokinesia and uh, what do you actually uh, what do you actually mean by bradykinesia means there is reduction in speed amplitude okay and uh, that voluntary involvement slowing of activities so both the amplitude and speed of movements are decrease so there is loss of normal arm swing while walking decrease blinking of the eyelids loss of ability to swallow then blank expression then difficult in uh, initiating any movement okay so difficulty in initiating any movement is also present then you have postural instability here the gait is typical shuffling gait or you can say fascinating gait where you see there is rapid small steps okay rapid small steps but uh, the important uh, thing to notice here is that the intelligence is not affected okay and in your face because of less dopamine because of decreased dopamine uh, there is uh, no inhibition on sebum secretion so sebum is secreted more and because of that waxy face or you can say mask like face appearance you will observe in patient so now you can uh, you can appreciate in this uh, picture that the uh, that is uh, we call as typical appearance of parkinson's disease okay so you you, you can see the stooped posture of the patient mask facial expression means uh, there is no facial expression then rigidity forward tilt of the trunk fixed elbows and wrist there is no movement okay arm swings is reduced then you have slightly flexed hips and knees and then crumbling of extremities and shuffling or short step gait baby steps and this typical uh, we call that typical uh, gait as Parkinson's uh, uh, you can say it is typical of Parkinson's disease festooning gait okay or you can say shuffling gait so that is uh, all about Parkinson's clinical appearance now uh, let's uh, discuss again so the clinical features include expressionless face greasy skin soft and rapid indecent speech then you have glabber top skin, flex, flexed posture, and impaired postural reflexes. And about the gait, slow to start walking, short side, small baby steps, reduced arm swings, and impaired balance on turning. Okay, so all these are the common findings of Parkinson's disease. Now the tremors are resting tremors. Okay, there are two uh, type of tremors uh, in your in your cerebellum injury. You will find that uh, intentional tremors are there, but here uh, they are the resting tremors. Okay, and rigidity uh, you can say typical cog wheel rigidity means increase in muscle tone. Okay, and that results in slowness of the movement of upper limb. And in lower limb we call it uh, lead pipe like. Okay, lead pipe. Now, bradykinesia is slow movement, okay, speed is less, uh, you're, like a reduced arm swing, you are not able to initiate any movement, so oh, very, very fine movements you will observe. Now, among the frequently asked question, uh, uh, there is typical body that, has no, that are known as Levi bodies, okay, so what are Levi bodies? See, suppose this is a cut section and this is your neuron. Now here, uh, this is the nucleus, and here you will find that eosinophilic cytoplasmic in inclusion body with the halo around it. Okay, so that is known as a Levi bodies. So what are Levi bodies? These are eosinophilic cytoplasmic inclusion bodies. Okay, and that halo is because of that halo is because of synuclein protein alpha synuclein protein okay, that is important and uh, 
there was one more uh, frequently asked question that uh, commonly associated toxin with this, with this disease and that is your manganese and what all are the uh, autopsy or gross examination findings okay so you will you might get that cut section okay and you'll you'll see certain black areas like this okay and that is the normal and then you have again this cut section with very few da dark spots so that is the depigmentation that is the depigmentation okay and that is directly related to the severity of disease directly related to severity of disease okay then they have asked the common gene mutation that is your alpha psi nucleon gene mutation okay and then uh, uh, regarding the management of this disease see uh, suppose you have uh, dopamine okay 100 dopamine and you have acetylcholine on other side again you have 100 acetylcholine so there is a balance of these two okay dopamine and acetylcholine so in in parkinson's disease your dopamine are reduced to 50 say okay so uh, how will you manage this disease so you have uh, two options now one is to increase the level of dopamine or uh, you can do another thing you can uh, reduce the acetylcholine to 50 as well okay so you need to balance out these two okay so that is important or you should you should increase the dopamine levels or you should decrease your acetylcholine levels okay so that is all about the Parkinson's disease.